Knockoff Nation, we're back for episode 39 of the Knockoff Podcast, joined by Knockoff regular Chris is on deck. Kyle Stephen, back for a, uh, a throwdown. Good to be back. Joined by a special guest who's taken time out of his uh, busy schedule to join us. None other than Brisbane cricketing prospect, Chris Lynn. Welcome, Chris. Thank you for having me. Mate, thanks for taking time out of your schedule, like we said. We're continuing to grow our product here at the Knockoff. It's been... A successful 12 months and we're looking to finish the year with a bang so to have you on deck and take time out of your schedule mate much much appreciated we're on the uh we're on the eve of nrl grand final time here right now you're a diehard broncos man can they beat the roosters this weekend i think they can definitely beat the roosters this weekend i had lunch with um gordy tallis yesterday and um yeah he's a big fan of you know believing the Broncos can make it all the way, but fuck, you, yeah, you can beat the Roosters. You're still not going to win the flag if you can't beat the Storm. So Exactly right. Yeah, no one remembers who comes second or third, really. Um, but yeah, they're giving themselves every chance, but you never know. The Storm are a couple of injuries away from, from going, well, from losing, but just like any team, I suppose. But yeah, it's going to be a good battle tomorrow night. Most definitely. They're on, they're on board. The Storm... Are super short price favourites, but as you say, an injury or two away from a key player and it just throws a spanner in the works completely. I think Brisbane, the Roosters limped past the Titans last week. I mean, they did enough in that game where they took a while to hit the front and then once they did, it, it was all she wrote. But I'd love for the game to be at Suncorp as a Broncos man. If they could have edged out that home final, which going to Sydney might make it a different story, but all confidence on deck. Apparently, Nick Arima will play fullback. Darius Boyd has injured himself for mm. not sure how long his injury is yeah, looking I to think, be. but his hamstring injury? It is, so it's yeah. it's normally about 10-day turnaround if it's grade one. So, again, if they win, then, well, they've still got a second chance anyway. That's so, I it. reckon you'll see him back next week. So, they, so the Bronco, if the Broncos win this weekend, they'll get a week off. So that's the advantage of finishing the top four. So... In the re- the other finals, if they were to get through, what are your predictions for the other games? You got uh, Storm v Para. So yep. Storm, it's a no brainer. Uh, I got- think Penrith will do manly. Um, I know they're outsiders, but I like um, you know I like their halves, what they're doing at the moment, the way they control and how like how calm they are. Definitely like, such a young age. The way they the way they lead, steer the team around the park, and then Kiri's goal kicking is unbelievable. Un- Cleary, sorry, yep. it's unbelievable. Nathan Cleary, for a, a 19, 20-year-old prospect coming into the NRL, just looks like a seasoned campaigner. Mm. His dad, Ivan Cleary, is coach of the West Tigers, so he's grown up in a football factory at home that would be studying the whiteboard every night in the, in the Cleary household sort of thing. <laughs> to be able to have a, an elite-level NRL coach as your mentor from a under-7s onward age, it, it shows in spades. So he's a complete freak. They mainly won last week, so it's one of those ones where... In round 26, Manly played against the Panthers. Now they back up a week later in finals time. And with the finals format, the stadiums that they play in, they don't play it at Brookvale. They go to Allianz Stadium now. So it is a home game still for Manly, what they deem a home game, but they have to go to that neutral venue. So in the space of seven days, the Panthers can absolutely turn it around. Whether the... Is the Matty Moylan thing a distraction? I don't come, think coming so. Into this, I don't like, think so. There's so much shit going on in the NRL week in, week out. Mm. Like, I don't think it will, especially this time of year. The players are old enough and smart enough to, to know what's going on. Um, yeah, as I said, they're all adults. They're all accountable for themselves and they play on. Yep. Absolutely. Do why, you? That's great. Why, why is it that um, that rugby league players don't have the same goal-kicking abilities as rugby union players? Is it just down to a training and practice thing? or De- uh, Depends what team you're in. I mean, like the Wallabies could have done with a couple of extra goal kicks in the like the most recent Bledisloe. Mm. I mean, we missed three kicks and that was ended up being the margin. But... Right. Different size footy, but some of the NRL guys these days are sharpshooters too. There's some some that are definitely better than others, but yeah, like, it's weird. But even just their technique is totally different. I reckon the way they set the ball up, the angle of the ball, mm. the height they put it on, it's like the tee. It's it's completely different. And you know whether or not it, it is the shape of the ball, I don't know. But maybe we should take note out of out of the rugby union boys because they ugh, they don't seem to miss. Did you play any footy growing up, or, or is it was cricket head on from a young? No, age I was for actually you? mainly footy growing up league. Um, I was just with I was scholarship with the Bronx for two years at, when I was about 16, 17. Then, oh, uh, then nice. I had a left knee recon, so that slowed me down a bit. And I was just sick of going to training and getting bashed by those big players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whereas I could go to cricket training, no matter how big or fast they bite, I could still whack it for six. <laughs> yeah. So I actually enjoyed going to training there, whereas footy was like a chore. I was like, oh, man, not again. Yeah. Like, so, what position did you play in league? I was a half. Yeah, there half, we go. yeah. So my uh, Queensland under-12s team was – we had Andrew McCulloch in there. 
uh, Benny Hunt was there, and um, Rabbit O'Connor, James O'Connor as well. So. Oh. Oh, nice fun. little line up there. Absolutely. Just to drop a few. Yeah. Drop a few names. <laughs> Guys that have gone on with it too, where I'm I'm hugely excited for Benny Hunt, where I'm a Dragons man in the NRL. So a lot of Brisbane people, sad to see him go, but for me, super excited to see him go there. We've, just, we've signed James Graham this week as well, mm. just a bit more experience to add into the mix. So we missed the finals this year where we led through 10 rounds, where everything, everything was going great. So we led through 10 rounds of the competition and missed the finals, where... Don't know. Got don't to know. peak at the right end of the year, don't it, you? Exactly yeah. right. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Mm. Where a twenty-six round competition is one of the longest going, really, mm. that sort of like EPL. Where NFL gets my dick rock hard, and they play. It's a sixteen-game season for mm. those guys. Where starts tomorrow too. It, it does. Yeah, Coles Balls Depot in the in the uh, the NFL as well. But yeah, no, I've got the San Diego Chargers, and it's I've been following it, and it's really good. It fits in because uh, once um, the footy starts, that's the NFL start of the off season. So. I just get footy all year. It's great. Jesus. And and do you what do you watch any other sports other than league? Like do you, would you watch a lot of cricket typically oh, even though you play? I'm not a massive cricket watcher. Oh, I enjoy watching the Big Bash obviously because it's not not a bad thing to know what's going on when you're playing playing against them. I watch a little bit of the test just because it's convenient at the moment late at night. Um, yeah, but I'm, I won't watch any other teams play. Right. Yeah, I watch yeah. certain players more than teams. So I've, I've got an interest in Matty Renshaw because I grew up with him playing across the road at Toomble. So I always enjoy watching him bat and I really want him to do well. But other than that, I, I enjoy watching Brendan McCullum bat and then Chris Gale, those type of blokes, yeah. A.B. DeVilliers. I don't really watch the teams. I just, I'll just i turn it on and if they get out, well, I'll flick it off sort of thing. Yeah, is it, I find it so interesting because we had, similarly, we had uh, a guy called Ben Wynn who fights in the UFC on the podcast and he was talking about that he typically doesn't even watch the UFC, really. If he if it's on, he'll sort of watch it and he'll watch a fight here and there. But outside of that, he doesn't really have too much interest mm. in it other than watching his division and, and sort of what's going on within that, you know? Yeah, like there's obviously pros and cons to it. Well, one's cricket's pretty boring, I reckon. But, um, <laughs> <coughs> <Yeah>. but um, <laughs> two, well, the, the pro is, it's, um, as I said, you get to know you, who you're playing against and... Rather than doing that footage for, before or after training, I can just watch the game and realise when what they actually do in a game because you can sit down and you um, you know watch all the footage, review it all, but then when they're actually in a game, what do they actually do? So it's for me when it when the big moments are on, seeing how that opposition plays rather than just a you know no pressure situation. And and is as a player, is there a lot of that? Like, is there a lot of sort of analysing tape and, and watching sort of your own performance back and, and watching your team's performance and all that sort of stuff? Is that is that a big component of sort of the training regime? Or uh, I used to be. I used to watch a lot of the opposition, but now I just realise it's just a just a ball coming at you. You just want to just whack it like, <laughs> fuck, it can't be that hard. That's like, don't play. I, like, I used to get nervous facing like a Muralitharun or a Brett Lee, but then I realised... He's still got to bowl the ball at me, and the ball is no better than anyone else. So, play the ball, not the bowler. Um, vice versa, when blokes are bowling to Ten Dorker or Virat Kohli, those type of blokes play the the batter, mm. not the actual. Yep. So, do you sort of credit that to some of your success that you had last summer, where B- BBL names up in lights end up progressing through to the Australian side, which, which we'll touch on? But mentally, did you just simplify it in your own head and go, look? Just fucking hit the ball. Yeah, well, it's just, just it's at the end of the day, it's a ball coming at me. I sort of, um, not to put a damper on it, but when Phil Hughes passed away, I was good mates with him and just realised that there's more life than just playing cricket and then, like, stressing out. I used to fucking get so nervous, like, leading up to games and now I'm just like, man, there's worse things in life than, yep, so and we've got it pretty good whether or not I get a duck, drop a catch. Like, mate, who cares? Like, there's people out there that die every day with cancer or whatever. So, like, fuck we got it pretty good. Mate, I, I always use that analogy in my own head now where, you know, if I've got some mediocre task going on in my, in my own head, something that I've got to do, even if it's simple that I don't want to, I always just throw back to that sort of stuff. Like someone's yeah. got it way harder than I do mm. right now with this little simple task I've got where I've got the missus at home, I've got my son there. Yeah, exactly. The show, the show goes on. Like, this really ain't that bad. No, just sack up and get it done. It's not that bad. Now. I, walked, I got a call on Monday um, to go down and see a kid that's got terminal cancer. I got a call about eight o'clock on Monday. I was down the coast by about lunchtime, and he's only got two weeks to live. Mm. And that sort of those type of things, yeah, it's awesome that we do that. But it puts in perspective, like 
how shit the media can be sometimes and how harsh they can be on players when it's like, man, it's just a game. That's like, true. Mm. There'd be so, cares, so much like, stuff behind the yeah. scenes too where you, mate, rugby league players, for example, will go out and get in trouble, but they'll focus on that rather than the 15 blokes that went to the children's hospital yeah, for exactly. five hours that, yeah. that afternoon mm. and made everyone's month, year. Those, those people will never forget that sort of mm. moment where, hey, do you remember, do you remember that day where fucking... Yeah, Gordy Tallis and that came to the hospital with Wendell, yeah. with Wendell and Lottie. They might have had a late night and then just gone straight to the hospital sort of that afternoon. That's like, right. You've also... Negative uh, going on. And how do, how do those things get, get pitched to you or, or how does that sort of come about, I suppose? Is there sort of foundations that, that reach out and sort of to you guys in, in terms of making that sort of connection? Yeah, or this how one, does that work? I suppose just people talk, I suppose, and, you know, if you've... Got two weeks to live. He asked. It was Make a Wish Foundation. So, one of his wishes was to meet a cricketer, and he was a Brisbane Heat fan. Then, I just you, you know you don't even hesitate to put your hand up and yeah. go down there. So, um, I didn't even realise they filmed it. Um, so that was pretty special to see like his reactions in his face and put a smile on his face for the next two weeks or three weeks, however long he's got. And um, you know, it's I think Bo Ryan does a fair bit of that. Um, and it's it's easy to do as a cricketer or a sportsman. But it means the world to like that person, mm. not only that person, but the family as well. Like, you, as I said, it's such a small thing to do for us, but it touches a lot of people. It's that not, sort of yeah, stuff. It's, it's not just that guy; it's a family. It's their second family as well, and it's yeah, it's pretty. It's a, well, it was fuck. It was a special feeling walking in there, seeing his face. Oh, I mm. bet, I bet. There's something that the extended family will, will never forget mm. in their life too, and it seems it's so something that just seems so simple that can mean. The world to someone. So, yeah, exactly. Mate, hats off for doing that stuff. I know if I had any athletic ability at all, I'd be putting <laughs> be putting my hand up for that. But maybe one day they'd be like, "Oh, yeah, I want that TKO guy." To come. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, okay. Like, uh, yeah. But um, what a cool kid that'd be, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the presence of greatness. Like, <laughs> how's um your Queensland debut? Uh, do you remember if did you get a phone call to say, "Hey, Chris, you're in"? Like, I always always ask that sort of stuff where. Who, who made the phone call? When were you notified to do it? Did you hear it through a manager or a coach called you and said, hey, here's the call up? Jeez. Um, I don't know, to be honest. I couldn't even think who the selector was at the time. Even uh, <laughs> well, Australia then, for example. Well, you Aust- made your Australia, debut last year. Uh, that was one day cricket, but day before Australia in T20, I was actually walking my dog across the road on Toonville cricket pitch. I was laying down, <laughs> just getting a bit of, bit of colour. And... Um, <laughs> And he rang me, I thought, oh, here we go. And so he rang me. And that was, Brushed that was, him? Like, yeah. <laughs> fuck that. Trevor Holmes, I think it was. Oh, Rod Marsh rang me. It was, yeah. And that's, 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 I'll never forget that moment. Obviously, you always wanted to play for Australia. You know, I was close as well. So I thought, um, yeah, it was, it was a good phone call. And I always remember. And it, um, I suppose those phone calls from now on can go both ways. Mm. You're either mm. getting a call to get dropped or you're, getting, or you're back in. So... You sort of sit on the fence. You don't know what's going to go on with Australian cricket at the moment. So you do get a call. So like, the, it's not like a, um, you know, like someone posts a, a team online and you're like, oh, I made it. Nah, fucking missed yeah, out. Yeah, like look, looking up on the whiteboard, <laughs> like yeah, old school, like, yeah. oh, I'm in the bees. Fuck it. Yeah, well, <laughs> normally, normally they call you. I was in India for the last time for the Champions Trophy, and everyone had got a call. I don't know. My phone must have shit itself or whatever. But I didn't, and I just found out on Twitter, or I was like. That's nice, nice, yeah. nice to know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm my, in. My mum knows I'm playing with pride. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. <laughs> we pitched that question to uh, like to Drew Mitchell when he came on for yeah. his episode, and uh, when he was first cracked the Wallabies playing for the Reds, he said he turned up to for Reds training one day, and the Wallabies were all there. He's like. Oh shit! <laughs> Looks like I didn't make that one. Like, didn't even, didn't even get a phone call to say that he yeah, wasn't in where he got true. brushed. But to have your name, I had fantasizing back to like high school where you see your names on those lists. Like, no, yeah. oh, no, nah, nah. it was always the B teams. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We created our own fifth eleven cricket team. It uh, we, Kyle and I were St Pat's products. We were the first ever fifth eleven where it was just. Where I, I could have played first 11 if I wanted to, but this fucking biased coach, man. Fucking how did you Don't ask him, just deny it. Exactly. It's funny oh. when you get that many tiers of teams that, you know, you actually, a lot of other schools don't even go down to that level. Mm. So, you know, you're pretty much getting your ass whooped by a B team if you're in yeah. the, yeah. the D. You, you end awesome. up playing the force as well, like the <laughs> yeah. same school. Mate, like. <laughs> fucking pretty much. Yeah. Like, that, that was the format for us, but... I was always the opening bowler. I was shit house batsman, like self confessed. But 
in uh, in this format, I was off a short run up. It'd be medium pace. So imagine Ricky Ponting bowling, like just off a sort of short run up, but just putting it in the right areas. At fifth, this was this was enough for me to just fucking <laughs> on the concrete. Just, yeah, it was. Yeah. We it, because every everyone else it was like. St. John Fisher High School, they had a synthetic pitch. Everyone else was going around. We yeah. fucking ran out and of fields. And you can play in shorts as well. Pretty right? much. Yeah. We were. We were in white canos out yeah. there a lot of the time. And we, we still we used the leather ball too. Yeah. yeah. Like like we, 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 we'd yeah. ran out of real estate to the point where we're at <laughs> yeah. Zilmia State School on a fucking concrete, just like off the long run, yeah. just bending the back. But <laughs> we ended up going through undefeated in a premiership in that in that year. We were 4-0. Oh. Took like, it off. 4-0. <laughs> oh. yeah. I, I actually was in the team but wasn't at school. So <laughs> yeah. 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 He, High school dropout. <laughs> He still managed to come back. I'd, I'd, I'd rock up on Saturday just after going out. And <laughs> I had the worst hangover. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And, and that, like, you, you mentioned it before about the, you know, it, it's just a ball and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm exactly in that similar vein of Matty. You've played, I think, at the school that I went to, G's, whatever level that is. So terrible. Deep. Yeah. yeah Real deep. 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 <laughs> low as low could possibly be in terms of cricket. And the... The, the thing that always freaked me out was the ball, you know? Like, I mean, because, you know, obviously you're real nonchalant about it, but that leather ball, you know, like when someone's fucking bouncing that out, you freak the shit out of me, yeah. you know? Like, I mean, so the t- for you to be so nonchalant about guys like Brett Lee, you know, like, I mean, bowling at you at, what, like 140Ks yeah. an hour or whatever, I mean, that has got to freak you out. But it's, um, I suppose it's just that you, you grow up, obviously... Um, you talk to the footy guys, they hate facing a cricket ball. Mm. Whereas there's no fucking way I'm tackling Petro in the <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know off off I mean? the kickoff, here yeah. comes Petro. Oh, <laughs> so, Get your body in front, Lenny. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, no thanks. <laughs> no, no, try off the ankle no. tap. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, that, uh, yeah, you just grow up with it, I suppose. And it looks a lot slower on TV as well. It's a bit like tennis when you see someone serve. It looks pretty slow. But when you side on, it's mm. fucking moving. It's, oh, like, it's lasering it's across the... It's coming, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I guess we've got the protection and my theory, that's why I swing hard because my theory is I don't swing hard and I don't hit it, then it fucking hits me. And then, <laughs> then, 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 you know, put A and B together, it hurts. Definitely. And is that just like a, a hand-eye coordination that you've always had? That sort of, you know, because the, the, I'm only a little bloke, obviously, but the getting the bat to go back and forwards by the time that the ball that actually yeah. come down the wicket was a struggle. You know, so obviously you're there's amount of time that you're moving the bat to hit that ball to figure out the trajectory that it's on and the angles that it's going to take. A and lot of the a lot of the time I guess to be honest. Really? So by the field setting. So I try and be one step ahead and watch the movements of the bowler, sort of where he's looking, get a feel of where they're going to bowl it. And you'll see every time I play a shot, my front foot goes straight down the wick exact same spot. Don't know why, but it just allows me to get in a strong position and then I just use my hands from there. But before I release it, I'm already sort of swinging the bat. Yeah, um, okay. But obviously, you've got some key fundamentals. So one for me is keep my head still. If you're moving around, your head's moving around, your eyes are moving, you can't see the ball. So give yourself the best advantage to do that. But generally, they want to try and get you out, so they're going to bowl at the stumps. Um, but, but now a lot of teams are bowling wider because they know if they bowl sort of in my arc, then it can... Anywhere, any length can can travel. So, yeah, it's um, just something you train for, I guess. But so you're making an assessment of where you think it's going to go as the guy actually is running down for the delivery. Yeah, or? by the field, I reckon, because generally the bowlers try and bowl a ball to what their field is set to. Uh, the real good bowlers can bluff, and and if you you've got to execute that to 100, percent otherwise you're fucked. And it's a it's not only runs, it's it looks bad as well because you haven't executed to a shit field. Mm-hmm. It's like, but um, yeah, I, mate, I don't know. I, when you're out there, everything goes so quick. Um, at the end of the day, I want to hit the ball as hard as possible because mm-hmm. um, if I hit it harder, then it's harder to catch. And then if I hit it out of the guts, it goes for six. I actually prefer, I find it easier at times to hit a six and a four purely because if I, I can hit it as hard as I want along the ground, there's still nine fielders that get in the way. Whereas if I know if I hit it in the air cleanly, no matter where the field is, I can that's I can just straight out the top. So I know there's more risk in it, but that's that's obviously the game I play, and um, I'm happy to keep uh, pursuing that way. By uh, professional standards, do you use a heavy bat compared to some of the other boys out very there? Very heavy, yeah. very. So it's about to get banned at the moment. I think the edges are probably <laughs> something like that. <laughs> yeah, shit. It's fucking huge. They're mate. massive like, compared to huge. what like. Well, first first bat I had 
back in the day was a it had a big S on it. It was one of like what Mark Taylor was Stuart using. Like that, or that, that's yeah. the one. That's the one. Yeah. Whereas back in the day in the backyard, it was obviously only a replica. But if you compare these bats from 1995. Brighty in the backyard at Kalanga compared to what Davey Warner's using out there. Yeah, now so it's exact, worlds apart. Exact same. His edge is like the size of the face on yeah, this one. Yeah, so I actually using. turned the bat on the side. Um, might have been two years ago now over the tomb ball and leg spinner bowl. One I fucking crunched today. Like, <laughs> went miles. It went over the net. It's in the Royal it. English Hotel. Like, it even, yeah, <laughs> in the pokey room. It didn't even like. make a sound because it, it was on the edge. There's so much wood behind it. <laughs> Everyone's sort of looking at it and what happened? And this thing just went miles, mate. Like... <laughs> I was like, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, next, please. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and is that just a natural ability that you have? Because obviously you're you're a big hitter. You know, is is that something that you've always had? Is that something that you've you've had to train and and, and develop your your skill base into? Or uh, I just think growing up, I always want to hit the ball hard. <laughs> As I said, I've just in the nets. Whenever you, you always try to hit the longest uh, training, especially like at the nudgy nets. There's no t- like roof on the net, mm-hmm. so you're just trying to bomb balls as far as you can. Um, same when I hit a golf ball, I just try and bomb it as far as I can. Um, I don't know, it's just something, everything I do, I want to do it with power and that velocity. Even if I'm in the gym, I don't want to do some squats or bench slow movement. It's always got to be, you know, throwing it up or, yeah. or medicine ball. You're throwing the ball as hard as you can. It's I, I, For me, there's no point in doing something slow because cricket's a reaction game and I want to be that powerful, you know, especially when they're bowling at those speeds, mm. you want to have that. You know, velocity gets get your hands through the ball. What's a standard training week looking like for you at the moment? Too is it you injured at the moment? Is that right? Like well, last week uh, I went to physio on Monday, Tuesday. Then Jimmy's on the mall at lunchtime, <laughs> followed, followed, by, followed by River Bar. Uh, um, training hard, just mate. flat out. Mate. <laughs> yeah. Sea deck on Thursday, <laughs> Byron Bay, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> so that was last week. So it was a setback. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> But um, no, so I'd normally just do physio one hour a day um, with the cricket guys and then I'd do another session at home by myself um, and then i mix it up sort of between like a, um, obviously with the shoulder injury, a leg session and then a cardio, whether it's a bike or a light jog. Uh, I've only just been able to jog as of this week uh, with the movement, so a few bike sessions. Um, pretty cruisy at the moment. I'll go down to Melbourne in two weeks to see the, the surgeon and he'll give me the all clear to sort of ramp it up and really get stuck into the into the strength side of things. And and is that a big component of, of your training routine? Like you mentioned before about uh, explosive movements and all that sort of stuff. Is that the the training methodology that they sort of um, try and instill or is that something that you find works for you specifically? Uh, they, they believe in a lot of cardio. Yeah. Oh, that's not for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> more of a short, sharp guy. Um but I, I've always told him I want to do, you know, I, I want want to get through some key aspects. So my hammies aren't great, so I want to make sure they're strong. Um, obviously running between wickets and whatnot um, and, and scooting along the boundary in the outfield, just making sure my hammies are good and then my shoulder. So basically my gym sessions are a couple of hammy exercises, a couple of shoulder exercises, and I do that three times a week. The rest in between is what I want to do and get out of. So whether it's medicine ball throw... Uh, chin ups where you sort of catch yourself, um, whatever it is, it's all up. Yeah, basically up to me. And what, what's the idea behind all the cardio? Obviously, that's that's for running in between wickets and stuff like that. Yeah, it's mainly for the fast bowlers. Like if more so on the longer format of the game. If you want to bowl thirty overs, it's fuck, mm. it's pretty hard. Mm. Like you don't want a bloke that can bowl one or two spells at one forty, and then his third and fourth spells at one twenty five. Mm. Dibbly shit things yep. that like wasting everybody's time. So. That's the main thing. And as a batter, I suppose you want to be able to bat six hours. And that um, I've done it once. Um, and fuck, it was so sore the next day. Mm. Um, and I wasn't exactly fit. But uh, I suppose mental strength got me through. But the next day, I was cooked. Like, I couldn't feel the next day. I was. Wait, one of the examples in Bangladesh at the moment, Peter Hanscom, one of the batsmen for Australia, came off not out the other evening where he batted for two and a half hours in Bangladesh. It was 80% humidity, 40 degrees. <laughs> And he's two and a half hours in, he lost four and a half kegs. Yeah. Oh, Straight in the ice, oh. ice bath afterwards because at 10, 10 a.m. the next day, he's got to back up and go back out. Yeah. So and I suppose the fitter you are, the longer you can concentrate and the better you can. So obviously there's, there's a method to the madness, but um, it's not exactly for me. I prefer the shorter formats yeah. of the game. Mm. I'm short, sharp as well, even in the cot, which yeah. is problematic. <laughs> <laughs> like, like real cot. sharp, but <laughs> fucking short. <laughs> <laughs> 
You and mentioned uh, you go, mate. Sorry, mate. I, I was actually going to just ask you about that that concentration element because you know, I mean, like you said before, it is uh, depending on obviously which format of the game that you're playing. There obviously is a a long time that you're either standing in the field or, or you might be, you know, at, at the crease or whatever. Um, is it tricky to maintain focus for that that amount of time? Is there sort of things that you have to do to to bring yourself back or? Yeah, well, fuck, it is tough, and that's why I'm not playing Sheffield Shield cricket this year, which is because I've that I've lost that motivation to stand in the field for six hours. Uh, and some guys can get through because they really enjoy, you know, chirping around in the field and and getting around. But I suppose some some guys have different motives. Uh, but it's not for me. I prefer the hour and a half um, in the T20 or the one, even the one day format. Um, you know, 50 overs is long enough for me at the moment. Um, but I suppose when I'm out there and I can't throw, I sort of feel I let the team down that way. Um, you know, if I can't dive and I can't throw, so if there's half a chance and I can't go for it, it's not fair on the bowler, I feel. So in T20, I can get away with it. Um, but yeah, that concentration thing, it's sort of always been my downfall, especially through yeah. school. God, <laughs> who'd, yeah. um, who did you look up to as cricketers growing up? Were you... Big cricket fan growing up, or um, you said, said before you haven't watched it as a spectator much. But no, was there watch, anyone? I still that watch it, just not not um, you know an avid cricket, yeah. cricket watcher. I suppose they're just your Pontings, your Warns, your Gilchrist, uh, Matty Hayden, those type of blokes. Um, mate, that era of cricket was fucking as unbelievable. Good as, wasn't it, it? as good like, as it you, gets. That. You look at those names, and then you sort of no offense to the guys playing now, but they're not household names like those guys. Um, and it's hard for this current generation as well because they get compared to that. Most it is, it group is. Where these guys won on like 19 test matches, like something like that straight where they won, which almost unheard of in that format of the game where rain-affected games result in a draw and things like that. These blokes won these games outright, yeah. 19 in a row. So it's, it's, it's a tough school now. And as I said, the media get on, on your case. Mm. But there's going to be downfall because you can't be that good for that long. Yeah. Um, in, you see India at the moment, they're the powerhouse of, of cricket. And they're, fuck, they're only getting better. There's four million of the counts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. It, it, does, it must come down to the volume of people that you've got to select from. And especially in a country like, like India and all that sort of stuff where... I mean, have you you've travelled over there y- yourself? Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been there about seven, eight times. Um, you know, it's it is a third world country, and they they don't have the facilities that we have. But you know, they've got the passion. Like mm. cricket is number one over there, and they've got as I said, four billion people or whatever, however many. It's ridiculous, and you know, every one of them's playing cricket in one park. There'll be twenty games of cricket going yeah. on, and, and it's pretty. It's a it's a really good eye opener um, to see how what use they make of a, an area to play cricket whereas you know we won't settle for anything less than a nice grass yeah. turf lawn perfectly mowed sort of thing and that's why they get along you know around the world being so successful as they are because they play in every conditions growing up and it, it, are those those for, forgive my ignorance but are they those cricket fields where you they're you're, they're effectively caging off the the crowd from the actual pitch. Or yeah, yeah, they do that. They do that. They do put um, you know, fences up around because they're just mad, mate. Like if as soon as the last ball's bowled and they win a game, they'd run on the field. But um, you know, obviously with security now, they've tightened it up and it's pretty. It can get pretty hairy over there at times with all the the bombs or whatever it is, mm. the, um, terrorist stuff. Fuck, we've I've been in a few situations and. It's, uh, yeah, you don't leave your hotel room and it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty scary. But in saying that, like, they're not, they're not a big, like, statue. Like, they don't have that big presence. Mm. Whereas you go to the Caribbean, you walk around at night, you feel intimidated because yeah. they're those big 15 Kyron Pollards. Yeah, fucking exactly. <laughs> whereas the bagged out of their head. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, but, you know, a bomb can go off anywhere these days. Mm. It's fucking, it's crazy. The... IPL itself, you played for Knight, played, Knight Riders? Yeah, that- Kolkata Knight Riders. Um, I played one year at the Deccan Chargers under Buff Lehman. That was that was pretty cool. Uh, but last four years I've been with the Kolkata Knight Riders and their franchise has been unbelievable. Uh, they're owned by a bloke called Shahrukh Khan. He's worth about 600 mil. <sighs> Just a lazy 600. Yep. Um, Similar net worth to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bollywood. Yeah. Bollywood big. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they're a great franchise. Um, he's the number one actor in, in India. Uh, the guy who owns the team. Yeah. 
Yeah, right. so he, he's, a, he's a Bollywood actor. Yeah, he's, he's a Bollywood. A, he's, uh, he's massive. And he's a good dude as well. Like, he comes in. A lot of the Indian owners go in and put pressure on their teams, ex- wanting them to win or ex- reasons why they didn't win. He just comes in and goes, man, it's whatever. Just, just yeah, go and have fun. Yeah, it's game of cricket. Yeah, because he got brought up from nothing, basically, from the slums um, and grew grew himself to be an actor and obviously one of the best in the world. Like, he, he I think he's like, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and some other person combined, basically. Wow. wow. It's ridiculous. Because the market's that big with the yeah. population. But like you've never heard of him. No. Like, whereas yeah. you've heard of Leonardo Where he'd be, any yeah, other week. The absolute superstar over there. And they wouldn't have... I mean, I don't even know what Leonardo DiCaprio's net worth would be, but it wouldn't be any $600 million. No, you know? well, him I mean, and no. another bloke, I can't remember the name, but yeah, he's about 300 I think, <laughs> Leonardo, which is nothing. To... Well, even uh, like Brett Lee's got a couple of Bollywood gigs over there and stuff now, apparently doing incredibly well through that. But um, Shane, uh, uh, in Darwin, Shane Lee was a guest speaker at uh, what, like a open sort of function, and he told us, like, got open floor and he was really candid about what he said too he's like ask me a question I'll answer it like the, you've paid to be here I'll try and be as honest as possible and he told a story of when uh, touring in India with him and Warney st- um, sitting around a pool he's like talk to uh, ended up talking to these girls They're like oh we'll go we'll, we'll go out to dinner with these girls tonight like just friendship group whatever go have some drinks turned up in the street took, got their driver to go there and so these girls have gone and told everyone there's about 700 people there with the street blocked off knowing oh. that Shane Warne and Shane Lee are about to yeah. turn up yeah, mate, to this street. It's, it's like, mate, it's crazy. Oh, shit. I, just, I was just here to throw a leg. There's, I've got to meet 1,500 <laughs> people first. <laughs> I walked into KFC with Dale Stane one year. Turn around, there's 500 of them fucking outside. <laughs> really? Just wanted bacon and egg, bacon yeah. and cheeseburger. Yeah. <laughs> That's, it, it is that diehard there, though, as you say. It is, it is the number one sport, too. Yeah, and you just can't, like, they're passionate and. You know, sometimes in Australia we get ignorant rather than passionate. Mm. And especially too, it, it's 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 really eye-opening when you go to those overseas locations to see how international countries support their sport, you know, because I, I, I know for a fact, you know, here in Australia obviously we're, we're, you know, sports fanatics sort of thing, but you go to a game of footy, people cheer, or, you know, game of cricket, cricket people cheer, but you go to, you know, like your Englands and you watch sort of like an Arsenal game or you, you go to India and, you know, and watch cricket – it's a whole different thing altogether, you know. Like, I mean, people yeah. just, you know, it's it's life. Well, they love in England. They love singing, don't they? Yeah, that's Whereas it. We don't really sing here. Yeah. Just, I'd be all about that. We just spray them. We yeah. just get I'd, into it. I'd, I'd be chills. all about that. Where I, I know exactly what you mean. Where in Australia, the tall poppy is rife out here. It's, yeah. it's, it's cringeworthy at times, but I think Australia in general, and not not to generalise because not everyone's the same, but there's a difference between being a fan and a supporter. Where a supporter through thick and thin, where Newcastle Knights, for example, now won three wooden spoons in a row. They still get 20,000 there on the weekend. Yeah. Where they, they have supporters where back when the Brisbane Lions were doing their three-peat, they had a fuckload of fans. Yeah. Where it's yeah. like, how good are the Lions bandwagon. going? How good are they going? And bandwagon fans, yeah. that's right. So the supporters there through thick and thin where fans will just jump on and off when the going's good. Yeah, exactly right. right. And what do you like to do outside of, outside of cricket? What are your sort of your interests and, and hobbies and all that sort of stuff? What do you fill um, your time en- with? Enjoy a bit of golf. Yeah. But obviously can't get out there at the moment. Um, love gambling. <laughs> yeah. Love punting. I'll literally <laughs> punt on yeah. anything bar cricket. If, so. it, really? if, it, if it moves, if it we'll moves bet on, on it. On. Definitely. Um, do you have, that, um, that's a slippery slope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, a good one, though. Fuck, fuck it's fun. It is, oh, it's it good. Because I, don't, I, go, I don't get that adrenaline rush going out to bat while I'm injured. So that rush for me is, is gambling. If it's horse coming down the outside, then so be it. Yeah, so, there's a bit more uh, risk mate, for it. Can I ask, what's the, what's the biggest win that, windfall that you've ever had on a punt? Uh, biggest windfall was about 16. 16? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. On, so on, I, had, I, had, I, had, I had 15 on Winks <laughs> last weekend. <Yeah. laughs> I could have tipped to that. <laughs> was, that the, what, was that the sports bet special, oh, was it? Oh, gee whiz. <laughs> <laughs> $2. Well, she was, what a, I thought she was in trouble, actually. Winks is prob- known as probably the best horse in it. Oh, well, is the best horse in Australia at the moment. And uh, yeah. like, w- one of the best ever has won 18 or 19 yeah, straight now. I think now, she's so got 9 in a row. In a row. Right. It's lost a couple, though, so it hasn't quite hit Black Caviar. Yeah. I was about to ask yeah, that. Yeah. Early in the piece, it, it like she had lost, where Black Caviar went through undefeated the yeah. whole way, but it's gone on a run very similar to her, where la- the last two weeks it's been as close as ever, where she, she just won t- like a few weeks back and then on the weekend backed up again in Sydney and yeah. 
I'm actually Basically. going down the Cox Plate to watch Winks run. Yeah, it should be three. Courtesy of Ladbrokes. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Oh, there thank we you. go. It should <laughs> be. Um, it should be three straight for her. You'd think. I, I think at so. At this point in time, it's like manager preparation. What, what's her distance? Uh, Cox Plate's two thousand and forty meters. Yeah. Like at, at Mooney Valley, was sort of a, a different track than most. It's a lot tighter. It feels more like a circuit where. You know, in Sydney, Melbourne, Flemington, places like that will have really long straights. Too, don't they? That's right. Yeah. So she is versatile enough to run clockwise in Sydney, but anti-clockwise in Melbourne, and that mm. can really fuck with horses too. Yeah. Go, going around the, the different way, where it's like, oh, he didn't didn't handle the Melbourne way of going at mm. all. So versatile enough to do that, and that's what makes separates the champions from just the nags. So, do you have shares in any? Uh, I've got one. Yeah, it'll be running in uh, December. Yeah. Don't have a name for it yet. Um, you're going, to, you're going to go look through the breeding lines to choose nah, names nah. and stuff. Yeah, that, I've got that a few mates that sort of enjoy a few things. So we're going to call it uh, <laughs> Nose Beers. <laughs> K N K N O W S. As in Nose Beers. Nose Beers. That's so a great that's name. Every fucking mug punter out there. It'll be twenty every time it runs. It'll be the shittest horse in the fucking race, yeah. mate. Could be the shittest so horse in the that's race. Got a run. Yeah. It's got a few uh, votes. Just, just loves it. Just craft beer and stuff. <laughs> just loves craft beer and like uh, unreal. You, do you have a trainer for it? Well, like, Peter still... and Will Holwit just around the corner at um at uh, Ascot there. Excellent. So. What could possibly go wrong? Mate? What could possibly <laughs> yeah. go wrong? But it must be. It must be some buzz. Where I've known a few people out at the races, like with boys, have had shares in horses and stuff, and it's some buzz, as you say, that adrenaline when you've got your own. Yeah, in investment in there running. It, it's a great day at the races where I, I grew up going to the races. My dad was a mem- member at Doombin from seven to seventeen, basically. So it d- doesn't go out a whole lot anymore, but yeah. grew up in racing, and it's something. W- once you're in, you're in. Like, Mate, it's it, that it, it good. just gets you. I'm just about. To, I got a meeting tomorrow with the BRC about an ambassador this year. So jump on. Yes. Bit of bit of cash, bit of contrast. So I'll be there off my tree. <laughs> <laughs> But no, um, even another mob, a, a trotter um, throughout the Big Bash offered me 30% in the horse uh, just to name it Lynn Sanity. So that was pretty oh, cool. Oh, so, okay. Well, yeah, 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 that was a yes. Can we use this name? Well, fuck, you don't yeah. ask me. Yeah, just, yes, yeah, 30%, sure. So. And you mentioned before about like when you when you were overseas, you, you mentioned that you had a couple of pretty close calls, like to, to uh, safety... I guess is got to be a big thing when you travel to those sort of countries, and and for the people that don't follow it, there's still countries that that cricket actually doesn't even go to anymore, like your, yeah, your Pakistan's and and all that sort of stuff. Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe uh, too, yeah. really? I think so. Yeah, we don't, haven't toured there for no. It's been a while, yeah. Um, but yeah, like with the Australian team, so obviously their security and when you travel on the bus, you'll have two police cars in front and behind. Um, where everywhere you go, and the and our security guys will actually go over a week before and make do all the checks everywhere, right. uh, make sure there's you know the ticking all the boxes at the ground at the hotel, with the local police, local government. So it's it's full on. Like there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that you don't see that um, really like you can't thank them enough because yeah. there was one incident in uh, I think it was Pakistan, the Sri Lankan team, and the, there was a couple of um, I was talking to Senga Kara actually. Um, and he was telling me some the only day in the test match that the two buses didn't leave together from the same hotel is when they they got shot at. There were blokes around and there was a, a, a hand grenade rolled under the bus oh. when they were getting off, but the bloke didn't pull the pin out the whole way. So if that goes, they're all fucked. Oh, and like they, It's like an entire national team just in, in one blast. Like Mahala Jawal yeah. and they're saying a car, they're all p- pulling like strapping away out of the like heads and backs at the airport, then they just like, what do you do? So they just had a drink and yeah, right. What, yeah, what can what can you? So like? who are the who are the extremist like crew who obviously target you guys or whatever? Whoever, mate, whoever. Yeah, really? I guess yeah. blokes just trying to make a statement to mm, whatever they yeah. stand for. Um, it can be any scenario. Um, you know, we've got ISIS, but like India and Pakistan have got a huge rival because there's no cricket in Pakistan. Could be anyone. Mm. It's a lot of it's politics as well. Um, that's that's big. Um, I know when we played an IPL one year, there was an election on. We had to move the first half of the IPL to Dubai. So that's right. Like, that was awesome. Yeah, like, yeah, I bet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Ended up Wish it had a fucking stayed there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I want the elections on every time. Yeah, that was pretty cool. But obviously, spent a bit of cash over there. But yeah. But, um, yeah, and it gets pretty hairy, mate. And where would be your favourite place that, that you've played overseas? Is there somewhere that you sort of 
affiliate more with than most? Uh, well, I've been to India probably eight times, Sri Lanka six times. Wow. Sri Lanka's I enjoy much better than India. Just purely it's a bit more, oh, I don't know, cleaner. Yeah. Um, England was real good this year. Uh, stayed, stayed in Kensington. That was, that was pretty sick. Nice. Um, uh, I've been to, been to South Africa on a rugby tour. Um, I'd have to say that's probably the best. Yeah. Um, can't go past Cape Town, hey. Cape Town is a beautiful city. Mate, they're, they're, they're my favourite type of birds. Hey? Like, <laughs> 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 the thickest boots you've ever seen. Like. <laughs> Especially within South Africa too. The the thing that I like most about Cape Town too is it was one of the rare places that, and it might have just been my sort of mentality on it, but it was one of the rare places that I actually felt safe too. Yeah. You know, like kicking around. Compared to Joburg. Oh, yeah. So. Compared to Joburg, you know, kicking around of a night time or, you know, just pulling over at service stations. It, it just had a different vibe to it. Yeah. But obviously a very beautiful city as well with the water and the, the cliffs and all that sort of stuff. It's but, much cheaper too. Yeah. You know, compared Cape Town to probably similar to Sydney. Fuck me. We can buy a $300,000 house over there that's worth $3 million in. Yeah. Sydney. Yeah. Sydney oh, yeah. is just gangbusters. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. I think it's like one of, if not the, oh, probably not the most expensive city in the world, but it'd be close. Mm, definitely. Median house price is a million bucks. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, could just be outrageous. But yeah. um, you touched on golf before too. I love love playing golf. Um, who's the best out of the boys? Do you have a handicap yourself? Oh, I don't have an official handicap. I just play F eighteen. I, yep. I have no intentions of lowering it either. Yep. So good when you can play a golf day and play F eighteen and yeah. just take just, the cash. Just come out and burgle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a bit the same too. Where I, I've, as when I had an official handicap, I had a, had a membership. And I was yeah. I was eighteen point four, and I was like, yeah, I'm happy to right, hover exactly. around that. Where don't fill your cards. I'll, yeah, I'll get in the. Um, <laughs> I'll finish in the top ten on the in the comp every Saturday. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just idle here. I'm good. Yeah. Like, who's this fucking yeah. burglar? <laughs> um, who are the best? Um, James Hopes is pretty good. Obviously, and Ricky Ponning, he's obviously known for that. His fielding coach, Greg Blewett, he's he's a gun. His he's, son is a prodigy. I know, I've like, watched him on Golf Gods. Yeah, he's um, got a uh, – Greg Blewett, like a f- former Australian batsman, had a successful Aussie cricket career of his own. He's a transition into that? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Well, he's got um, his son, basically like a viral superstar, where he's, he'd be a to- toddler age – and they've got him a plastic set of golf clubs, and he's there, just at it, from sun up to sundown. It seems like through oh, through his Instagram, where yeah. he's going up to the ice machine on the uh, <laughs> on the fridge, clicking it, ice cube falls down, wacky hits it, hits it on the goes pool. again. And you're like, oh, that kid's going to make a fuck oh, loads yeah, of money. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Keep, keep going, son. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> so needless to say, my my kids now got a plastic set of golf clubs. <laughs> 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 but yeah, no no real superstars, but they they are good because obviously that hand iron similar swing too. Mm. Yeah. The boys hit it a long way. Glenn Maxwell's a serious golfer. I think he takes his golf more seriously than his cricket, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, you touched on before on playing with Brendan McCullum, Chris Gale and the like. Do you almost pinch yourself sometimes going, I'm just product from Toomble out there now running around with these boys who are known on global scale amongst everyone else? Yeah, I do. It's um, I got the opportunity when when I played under Buff at the Deccan Chargers. That was my first experience of it and I got to play with Sangakara, Dale Stain, uh, JP Dumini, those blokes. And I was only 19 at the time. So, I mean, I only played one game, but I didn't care because I was learning off them every day. Um, not just about their cricket, but off the field and how professional they were and when they could, you know, have a beer and when they'd switch on. And I think that's the main thing. If you switched on the whole time and, you you know, you get wound up and everything, you're only going to call your, like You're only going to fail. Mm. you got to There's switch on. There's a burnout off. factor as oh, well with mate. that too. Some blokes say, oh, you drink too much of this. Well, will you, oh, you play golf too much. Or <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you go fishing too much. Well, this is how I switch off. So, yeah. um, you know, playing with those guys and getting to bat with McCullum was probably one of the best ones mm. last year because we, we we did a fair bit of it. That was pretty cool. And, and the, the traction that was brought around that was pretty special as well. It was. Um, so we sort of, you know, we stick together and... We're probably two very similar people. We like punting, we like drinking beer and, and we go out and play the game as hard as anyone. So to have someone at the other end who think exactly the same, you know, that's the first time I've, I've been able to bat with him this year mm. and, it, and it felt like we have been doing it for 10 years. 
hit it off. And is that is that a rarity? Like, does that exist in like in professional sports? Obviously, is a lot different to how it used to be. But uh, is there still the the warnies that you know come off the the pitch and, and smoke a pack of durries and you know like I mean. Dr- Drink a slab of beer and all yeah. that sort of stuff. Is yeah, that just there, their there's MO? There's a few boys that, that love a smoke. I won't drop them. Yeah, no, nah, absolutely. Like, yeah, nah, far away, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Testing um, is this thing on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> huh? huh? <laughs> like at the end of the day, they're just normal blokes. And if like if you're a 20 year old and you have a smoke, well, you, whatever. Um, yeah. As I said, you're only harming yourself. You're not affecting anybody else. Um, but yeah, it's still there. But I suppose with all the sports science now, it's getting in the way, and you know you got to hit certain marks. The best thing is I love doing it because um, I know I can still perform. Yeah. So throughout the big bash, I'll probably drink more than anyone, but I know I can still perform. The moment you start, you know, you're going through a slump, that's when they start pointing fingers at you saying, yeah. you're doing this, 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 you're not training hard enough. Looking that's what that happens. Catalyst, but if you're, yeah. if, you're, um, if you're performing, then who are they to say you're doing the wrong thing? Yeah, that, and that's it. And I guess that that's all you can really be judged on at the end of the day, is it? You know, like I mean, is your performance on the pitch? Yeah. So obviously they've they've got certain criteria in Australia. That you've got to run two k time trial, skin folds, all this. Oh right. That's that's I understand all that because we're athletes, meant to be professional and all that. But when I go overseas, what do they expect me to do? They ask, well, I ask what, myself. When I'm there to win games of cricket for my team, score runs. As if I do those two things, they're happy. They don't give a shit what I do off the field. So mm. as long as you stay out of the paper, whatever, you're, you're fine. Yeah. Just Over as here, long as you can... a bit more. Just as long as you can hit uh, 26 um, home run... Yeah. 26 <laughs> sixes in a, in a season. Yeah. 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 Like, that's fine. Uh, ban- Brisbane Bandits player Chris Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> And that, that, that performance thing, you know, it, it's, it's a, a tricky one before. You, you mentioned sports science and, and cricket is obviously one of, those, one of those sports that probably doesn't get a lot of um, bad press around the whole uh, performance enhancing drugs sort of thing. Um, is, is that something that, you know, that, that potentially could help a cricket player? Or is it just something that really isn't even relevant in that sort of, in that sort of discipline? Uh, it can certainly help the players. There's no doubt about that. Um, you know, what happened with those, like, peptide stuff, if, if you put one of them in my shoulder, I'll be right in six weeks. Right, so. okay. But I think just the nature of uh, the, the stereotypical cricketer and his upbringing and, the, like, their characteristics aren't your rugby league players. You, they're not your – they're just a different breed. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, and they're, they're, they, are, they're, they are a different breed. They're weird. They're, you know, some are a bit simple. But yep. at the end of the day, they can still play. And, um, yeah, I just think they're – characteristics as a cricketer you have to be a little bit different um and you, you're not probably as much as a risk taker as a as a Parramatta player <laughs> or, or <laughs> yeah. George player. Yeah. <laughs> big Tarek sims there just fucking yeah. taking all the risks yeah but, um, and do you do you, is there sort of is there a testing pro that have to be a testing program yeah yeah so asada's in all sports asada yeah, right yeah, okay so, so. We're probably going to knock on my door any minute. So right. Yeah. Yeah. Old Byron Bay. So you have, to, you, you, have to, you have to properly like fill in where you're going to be and, and at what time and only, all that sort of shit? Only if you're or? in the top I think 10 or 12. Right. So I don't have to do that, but they can still turn up to your doorstep any time. Um, and actually watch you piss too. Yeah. So it's like put, right. your, pan, put your pants yeah. at your ankles like... Stare at your yeah. fucking yeah. old fellow. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's, uh, do, I have, test, do I have time test. to fluff myself a bit? Or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, they can turn up any time and it's, mate, they normally turn up five in the morning, between five and seven in the morning or at night time because they know you're home. Mm. Um, there's nothing you can do about it. You, you run away from them, you get an automatic strike. Um, so it is a good process what they have and uh, as you said, cricket's one of the cleanest sports, I think, just through the fact that they, a lot of the guys don't take risks and, mm. which is not a bad thing but, um, yeah, just the... I suppose it's a gentleman's sport, isn't it? As I exactly. Say. Yeah, it is. Really has has that sort of culture bred around it. Is that they, you know, they they often say that the the captain of the Australian Test cricket team is pretty much like the second most important guy to the you know to the prime minister. It is. Of, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. as high profile as it gets. Yeah. Ab- absolutely. But um, mate, should we wrap it there, boys? We've had a, a, a solid hit out for a good a good forty five. We won't tie you down a- any more, Linny, mate. Cannot thank you enough for coming on. We've had an absolute blast with you. We appreciate you giving us a leg up here. Shout out, boys. Chris, Kyle, thanks for your time. 
Ple- pleasure, mate. Pleasure. And I look forward, well, hopefully, get an invite back. Absolutely. We'd love <laughs> to have you on, man. Really enjoyed it. Thanks again. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks, mate. No worries. Cheers.